Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so since we've got a lot of Free Folk Raiders to paint up here all at once, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing them in a batch painting style. So just know this before we get started. So I'll be swapping back and forth uh, between our ones here that I've got a whole heap on a stick and one where I'm doing individually, which is our Bandit Leader. So I'm going to be focused a little bit more on that. Uh, but this will, all these paints will and the techniques will apply to all the miniatures we've got here. But just so we know, as we start off here, we're going to use Gilliman Flesh. And this is, of course, going to be for anywhere where we see any flesh, which on our Free Folk Raiders is actually not a lot. It's basically just the face and the hands that you see here. Also with that, I've given uh, each of our Free Folk Raiders here a Xenothor prime as well and i've also just added a little bit of uh, gravel from my driveway to the base as well so as we're painting up our flesh here we're going to take a lot of uh, advantage since we're using a contrast paint and we've got a nice zenithal highlight uh, prime that we have on here it's going to really take full advantage of the shadows and the highlights on there all in one step by just quickly adding the contrast paint to the mix Okay, so then once we've got that skin all complete and dried, we're going to come in now with some snake bite leather. Now, with the free folk here, their, their armor is all made out of cobbled together sort of bits of leather and hide they've found all over the place. So I want to reflect that in our miniatures here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing it all in a batch painting style. But as I'm going through, I'm going to be picking out different areas of each of the miniature with all of the colors that I use here. So just know that when I'm placing any color on here, I'm going to be applying it to different areas and um sort of places where it would uh, make sense where each area connects but it's totally random what i want to do here to so give them that feel like uh, they're all uh, made their own armor out of whatever they could find whatever they've hunted so this is gonna help with that sort of theme and also it's gonna keep the army sort of uniquely uniform as well since i'm going to be using the same colors just in different places over there so it can give them sort of like their own personality but also giving them a uniform overall look by having our uh, colors be on different places on the miniatures as well then once our snake bite leather is completely dry we're going to come in now with yet another contrast paint and this is going to be gore grunter first so i'm using a lot of contrast paints and painting these up as well because i feel like uh they're going to give a good effect uh with giving me the highlights and the shadows all in one since we're going to take full effect of that zenithal prime and because i have so many miniatures to paint here it's a, uh, a to it's a total count of 26 miniatures that i'm painting up here so we want to limit the amount of time that we can by still getting a good result as well so sort of like a speed painting video in one as well and to take full advantage of that zenithal prime we've got and using contrast paints is going to really help add in some extra steps that we're going to help used to speed up the process as you can see here and it's still making them look uh, good and uniform and like we spent a bit more time on them than we actually have so again we're just going around picking out different areas of the miniature and giving them that sort of cobbled together look then once we've completed those steps here we've got places we wanted to we're going to do the exact same thing again with wildwood which is a nice deep dark uh, brown color and i actually really like it as a contrast paint as well with this deep um, rich sort of dark almost sort of blacky brown color um and again we're just going around here picking out different areas all over the miniature it's totally up to you what you want to do here you can either follow along with what i've got here on these four examples here but just so you know it's completely random across all the miniatures i'm painting on just sort of picking out different spots what i've basically gone and done is i've looked at uh, areas that sort of connect as one piece on the miniatures like this one here we've got uh, sort of like an over cloak uh look with it sort of strapped around the belt on there so i'll include the hood and just the top part of the clothing with that to make it look like it is uh, one uniform piece of uh, hide or leather um, that we have here and it's just going through and picking out places like that to make it look like it is still um different enough but it still looks like one piece overall so it looks like it's semi-realistic and i'm not just going around picking out one arm this color one arm that color to give it some more uh, uniform look Okay, then once we've got that nice deep dark brown all dried up, now I'm going to come in with a completely different color. This is going to be Griff Charger Grey, which is actually a bluish grey. So I wanted to add in just a little pop of color to the miniature here. I didn't want them to be all completely brown. and It gets very boring after a while, so add in a few other 
uh, colors there so this is a, a bluish gray and I thought this would be cool for maybe uh, like a, a gray wolf that you see or something like that just something that's sort of like maybe a little bit frostbitten but something unique that they found in the uh, sort of snowy region where they're from that has a white off-white-ish uh, fur so just adding in unique bits of color like this you may want to add in uh, something else to sort of give them a little bit of pop and uh, not make them all look samey samey with the brown then once we have all those areas picked out, we're pretty much nearly completed with how we've gone with our uh, miniatures here. It's just a matter of all these colors. But now I'm going to come in with some Skeleton Horde. And this is a bone color. Um, so I'm going to be using this for all of the weapons that our uh, Free Folk Raiders have that are made out of bone. Um, it's quite obvious to see that they make hand make their own weapons as well. And they're a lot more uh, sort of primitive culture than the other ones that were painted up from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. So... Coming in with some bone weapons is going to really help add in a little bit more uniqueness in there as well and keep us away from the uh, browns as well by adding in that little bit extra colour. Then once we have all those weapons handles painted up with the bone, we're going to come in with some khaki now. So this of course is going to be another colour that we're going to add to our miniatures to give it another different look. So I wanted that lighter um, colour on the miniature to give it different pieces. Now as well as this I'm not just painting on the boots on all of the models. Uh, like I said I've been mixing the colours up so I've been painting... Uh, different parts different colors and this one here just happens to have some khaki boots so it'll be the exact same too so some of them may be the cloaks and the fur uh, all in those different colors as well so just keep that in mind as we're painting up the miniature here you don't have to follow along exactly what i'm doing here i'm just adding it to different parts of the miniatures then we have those boots painted up with our khaki colors we're going to come in now with some deck tan which is going to be another color we're going to add to our uh, sort of roster and varying it up so this one I'm going to be using for basically sort of uh, off-white fur so we've got our Griff Charger Greys having a whitish grey fur now I'm going to go for pretty much a straight white fur and I think this is going to be great for the trim as well but don't be afraid to use it on the cloaks and stuff as well um, and this of course is going to help I guess with a little bit more of blending with their environment since they're based in very snowy regions so it's, it's all up to you where you want to place each one of these colors then once we have that white fur painted up we're going to come in now with some stonewall gray and free folk they're a little bit more primitive like i said before since they got like bone handles and that as well it makes sense that they would probably have sort of stone weaponry uh, as well here you may also want to go with maybe like a dragon glass look um but I'm just going with sort of primitive stone here because they make all their stuff from basically the frozen wastelands of the north. So stone weaponry is a great idea. They've got plenty of stones to work with here. And it's just a matter of going around picking out all the stones on all of our free folk raiders. Then once we have those stone weapons painted up, I'm going to come in now with some actual metal. So we're going to use some gun metal for this. And this is going to be for anywhere where we can see any actual metal, which is very limited on our Free Folk Raiders here. So basically they've got these uh, flails with little bits of uh, like nails poking out of them. That's basically all the metal that we have on sort of these miniatures. And you can see that I've got the camera completely out of focus so you can see exactly what I'm doing for maximum effect. <laughs> but as I said, what we want to do with our metal color is we, we want to just come through and pick out anywhere that's metal, which is basically just these chains and these little uh, metal studs that we have on our Free Folk Raiders here. Okay, so once we have our metal areas painted up, we're going to come in now with a bunch of different colors here. So I've got Griffhound Orange, Smoke, and Dark Stone. This is totally up to you what you want to do here. You may not want to use these colors. And this is going to be for all of the hair on our Free Folk here. Um, so I'm going off just sort of random hair color. So I've got our Dark Stone for sort of a very dark uh, blackish brownish hair color. Smoke color is for, for your sort of standard brown hair. And our Orange to give ourselves some uh, redheads in the mix and uh, give us a lot of variety uh, from a distance on the table as well as that since we've got so much browns and um, sort of naturalistic colors on here ha having a bit of an orange in there will give a little bit of uh, eye popping color to the miniature as well so uh, just a matter of going around picking out at random what's one you want to give what here sort of see what seems cool at the time what you feel like you'd be up to here so it's totally up to you how you want to do you might want to add in some blondes and some mix maybe some white hairs i'm just going with these three colors here just to um vary it up but not have too many colors since we've still got a lot of miniatures to paint up as well then once we have that painted up what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in with some seraphim sepia now and this is going to be used to apply over um random parts of the miniature where you want to add a different tone to our colors we're placed on so i'm going to be using this as sort of like a um 
differentiation and a bit more of the colors as well but mainly i'm going to be applying it over the areas that we haven't painted with uh, contrast paints because contrast paints sort of do that in themselves so it's up to you and this is all about just sort of tinting colors to get them where you would like them and have different shades between all of our miniatures that we have in our army and again this is going to be the same step as before this time we're going to be using agrax earth shade to do it instead of seraphim sepia and this is Again, just going around, picking out areas, preferably that haven't been painted, so you can add in a lot more uh, definition and detail. And going around to those areas that you want to change up the color a little bit and uh, sort of make them fit in with our contrast painted areas, but also just giving different uh, color differentials between our uh, colors that we have on here as well, just to help vary them up as well and try and make them look a little bit different by still keeping the whole unit looking uniform across the lot. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to use one last wash, and this is going to be known oil. And this one here, uh, you can use the tint in that as well, but this one I'm just going to be exclusively using on any metals and stone. So this is for basically for all their weapons here, just because I want to keep them uh, very separated from the uh, brown tones we've been using here. So that's why I'm not using any serum sepia or uh, brown wash on that. I want that to be sort of a stark contrast and color with the wash and the wash is going to help do that and it's great for using on any metallic colors on here as well uh, i love the effect that it gives off and really darkens everything down and it's going to be good because it's going to give it sort of like more of a cold appearance as well um, by separating it out with all those nice warm tones and the brown washes we've been using And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up a unit of Free Folk Raiders from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video for some inspiration in painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.